what is exciting me in the future is creating uh, more experience, unique experiences, uh, using beverage as a uh, form factor and deliver those experiences because we drink beverages at social gatherings or at ceremonies, you know, uh, special events, and that has meaning. So if we can craft a beverage that boosts the experience for consumer going to those events, I think that will be a huge social impact. <music>
we have confidence launching it. This, you may have to do some homework to, you know, going back to the drawing board and, you know, reformulate or something. So we do this, you know, this is the very first step. We launch any new skill to build the confidence. Mm. Got it. So on, on that, uh, let's say you said clients send you this and then you test it, uh, the base, right? Yeah. But what kind of bases are this? Like, I mean, uh, all I, uh, let's say, I'm, 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 you know, if you can break it down, because I know like wine base is there, then gin, right. can, I mean, some other bases are there, can be a normal beverage, but just walk us over different types of bases. And what is the minimum uh, knowledge level you expect uh, from someone working with you? Right. Um, you can see <laughs> by the color, there are, the bases are, can be anything. It could be a high sugar, sugary based soda. It could be a, a, a syrup that is uh, has in high sugar, or it can be a, a wine, the alkalized wine or the alkalized beer. Um, and this, what is that? That is actually a, a simple soda. Uh, those, those are juices. So like I said, a base can be anything is really what our clients are targeting their niche uh, consumer markets. Um, yeah, and but you know, like I said, we have to do this to ensure the confidence. Mm, understood. Now, as as a product developer, right? Mm -hmm. You know, when you say you got it, you nailed it. Like this is the perfect output of a product. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, how do you test? Like, how do you know? Like, just this was a visual thing that you did. Yeah. But are there any computer things that show that this is a perfect thing? Exactly. So this is the first step to ensure compatibility. After this, of course, we want to ensure the taste, and that is really to each clients have their own standards. Taste, you can argue, there are beverages that, you know, doesn't taste weedy or her herbaceous at all. You know, it just tastes like a lemonade, you know, iced tea. Mm -hmm. That's one spectrum. Also, we are seeing another spectrum of clients. Um, they are trying to highlight the, the taste of the cannabis mm -hmm. because it's a cannabis drink. So I, we see that trend uh, starting to take off, but I, I do see two different trends of, you know, so that's the part of answering, is the taste good enough or fit your spec, Yeah. right? So after compatibility, after confirming the taste, what we're gonna do sometimes is, for example, if you wanna launch in Michigan or Canada, uh, the, regulate, the local re regulation is very strict. They have to require you to have three to six months shelf life. Then that's the step where we put this product into the final packaging mm -hmm. and we test shelf life. Mm -hmm. um, for three and six months uh, by testing flavor degradation, potency degradation, microbial, heavy metals, all those parameters, we measure every time point along six months. So it's almost like a 12 month or at least six months uh, testing and developing process, right? Right. Yeah, for certain markets, right? All so, right, depends on the state, where, yes, where you're going for. Exactly. Understood. Depends on the shelf life, what you have to aim for. Right. Uh, uh, one factor is the, what the state's required. Another factor is the brands, if they want to gain confidence, even the states doesn't require, for example, in California, but if the clients wants to gain True. confidence, we can help clients uh, testing, put the product into the packaging and monitor the shelf life. Mm, true. Nice. Uh, what, what's, what are the things that you see uh, going wrong? You know, uh, what, what is the toughest part about you know, making this? I think the toughest part is we, this whole industry is an organic, uh, complex system working together. Emotion is a key part, but it's not a whole part. So we provide, we, we cannot literally just give you the emotion and walk away. We have to work with testing lab. We have to work with brands, work with co-packing partners, because it's all organically connected to each other. Mm. If our infusion partner, co-packers made a mistake, they will transfer to the testing lab. We're gonna have failed potency, right? Mm. If the testing lab make a mistake. So we all, so Vertosa's job is actually in the middle. We have to ensure I talking know. to everybody and you know, getting everybody in line and you know, make sure all things work. Got it. And do you monitor uh, after the first order? Is that an ongoing relationship that you have with, with the brand mm. and the process uh, which they are doing in every batch, every run, mm. or it's sort of the one time you train them and then they are up and running? Yeah, so um, a lot of heavy research is in the beginning, mm -hmm. right? To figure out the, the, the condition, the SOP, how to produce a certain beverages, and what are those uh, stability data look like. Mm. You don't necessarily have to monitor each batch's shelf life. Mm -hmm. Well, 
what you can do is, after product is on the shelf, as a brand, uh, as, a, as a partner, we can put product on the shelf, off the shelf and test you know, the stability data. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, if you have the data in the beginning, you don't have to test every batch. Nice, nice. Cool, something else we can see. Um, uh, you can talk about your, how do you plan your day? What's going on in your life this week? <laughs> oh yeah, cool. So it's, it's really, uh, uh, this is just a typical whiteboard, but you know, I, I'm the person who love to brainstorm with people using whiteboard. Um, you know, it really visualize the plans. Um, but you know, our industry is so complex because we have to work with the oil suppliers. We turn that oil into emotion and work with the downstream processors, uh, labs, brands. So it's a, like I said, organic system that is all connected tightly to each other. Uh, what, is, what is this like? You know, just, just give us, what is this? Yeah, it's, it's a, a preliminary research method. We are testing, you know, how sonication to make an emotion versus, you know, you know, high pressure. Is, is that the uh, one which you're working on, the, the edibles that you're, you know, also trying to crack uh, the immediate effect? Um, this particular uh, topic is regarding um, how to produce emotion consistently mm. on a higher scale. All right. right. So there. So producing emotion, you always combine chemistry with physics. Chemistry is uh, the ingredients, the emulsifier. You know what's the composition. The physics are you need add energy into the system to to make the emotion. So sonication is one way to add energy, and there are other methods to add energy. So here we are evaluating. Okay, what's the best and repeatable and scalable? method mm. to add energy so that you can have a repeatable emotion as a product. Nice. What, 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 is, what is this, Errol? Oh, this is actually a, a interesting machinery that we're partnered with uh, another company. So this is a cannabis fountain, mm. soda fountain. Um, so they want to make this. Imagine uh, you go to a, a, a cannabis launch. Yeah. Or uh, like know, a draft beer thing. Huh? This yeah. Is Essentially, we can put our emotion in here, uh -huh. uh, even terpenes, and even our, pro, uh, our client's uh, syrup, con high concentration of syrup. Now, you can adjust the numbers from, each, from 1 to 11, right? What can, how many mil from 1, how many mil from 10 and 11, and you put this trigger. And then you can create a, a beverage in real time, infused. Well, wow. nice. What about this? Oh, and that, those are the machine that fills the cartridge, uh, because you know, imagine you have you have emotion in here, you feel emotion in here, right? And that's the machine that you can deplete the emotion or fill the emotion into the cartridge. Hmm. I'm pretty excited about this application because Amazing. you know, um, beverage beverage consumption is always an impulse buy, right? Consumer don't go to somewhere to buy beverage. Consumer want beverage right here, right now. Hmm. If you have this machine in the launch, whenever they want it, you can, you can formulate it. Mm. Oh, nice. So it's like draft beer. Craft beer, yeah. And I, I truly believe this is the method to uh, change, to alter consumers' mindset regarding cannabis beverage. Mm. It's, it's on tap. And this, this would still have to go through the traditional dispensaries, right? Because it's obviously got THC and everything. Right, so uh, this partner specifically, they designed a the machine of every cartridge is tracked and is in the metric system. So every drop they consumed, they got recorded. Oh, wow. You know, so what, what do we do here? Just explain from the basics, you know, what, what do you do? What is that, uh, Harold? Yeah, so what Vertosa has been focusing on and essentially what the industry need is a reliable water compatible ingredients. Why? Because this is the typical THC distillate. It's a very viscous, not water soluble, but oil soluble ingredient. It's a wax. Um, that's why you can do a cookie. You can butter, you know, extract it from butter and use the butter to make a cookie. But the issue is when you eat that, or uh, the onset is very slow, because imagine those are one big oil droplets, that big, like huge, right? So when you uh, ingest that uh, ingredient in the, in, the, in the gut, it will take a long time for your uh, system to um, metabolize it and absorb it. So the onset is slow so that you can easily overdose, right? You eat more than you need it. Well, our job at Vertosa is to convert these ingredients into 
emulsion. It looks like a milk, right? Essentially, in here, there are billions of smaller emulsion droplets. They're just floating within the emulsion. And the, how we use the emulsion is we take the emulsion and we take a base. This is a beverage. And we infuse emulsion into the beverage. So you see this, the whole chain from a distillate to a water compatible ingredient to a final beverages, right? So, um, so why emulsion? Of course, the first thing is emulsion made the distillate water compatible. You can never just put that directly in the beverage. So that's the first benefit, main benefit. And, but also because we are cutting this one big uh, droplets into billions of smaller droplets, you don't see it by eye, but we have machines to test how big they are. So by doing this, you, you are creating a lot of new surface area, right? Um, and then when you imagine we are drinking this, those new surface area will be hitting into the uh, small intestines and give you a very short time to absorb it. So that when you're drinking a cannabis infused beverages, you can feel our goal is to like a beer or wine. You should be feeling something before you finish that beverages. So 10 to 15 minutes onset is our target. Nice, I think perfectly explained. Thank you very much. All right. Any, any closing remarks you want, to, you want to have for the industry, you know, for people, uh, you know, into product development, any, any lessons you've learned, you know, as, as an expert in this? Yeah, I, I do feel uh, right now we are really at the infancy of the cannabis beverage development. Uh, right now we talk about stability, stability tasting good, uh, long shelf life, um, you know, and repeatable experience. But that to me is the table state. Uh, five years later, when we look back, this is the must have we have, right? But what is, what is exciting me in the future is creating uh, more experience, unique experiences, uh, using beverage as a uh, form factor and deliver those experiences because we drink beverages at social gatherings, art, at ceremonies, you know, uh, special events, and that has meaning. So if we can craft a beverage that boost the experience for consumer going to those events, I think that will be a huge social impact.